Pinterest has changed a lot over the years and people are still asking what is the best Pinterest scheduler to use? Now I have worked very hard perfecting my pinning strategy for me and countless clients over the past few years. So for today's video, we are going to be talking about the two main schedulers that I see people asking about, which is Tailwind versus manual pinning or using the free Pinterest scheduler to see what is the best pinning strategy. And if you would like a step-by-step -step tutorial of my pinning strategy, make sure to check out my Pinterest course called Pinterest Simplicity down below in the description where we go way more in depth on the best pinning strategy. But let's first take a look at Tailwind. And if you're not sure what that is, Tailwind is a third-party scheduler that is an approved part partner of Pinterest for you to be able to schedule your pins automatically to go out on the platform. And it honestly makes pinning a lot easier. They also have Tailwind communities you can join to increase your reach, which is kind of like group boards on Pinterest. Tailwind has their own analytics. They have a smart schedule that analyzes when your audience is most active on the platform. And it's super helpful to figure out when are the best times to pin. Now I have not used Tailwind in a few years. So I jumped back into my account because I wanted to see what else they had. I did a lot of research on Tailwind to see what strategies are working and what is not working so that I would be better informed to create this video. And to be honest with you, it has changed a lot and improved a lot. I am actually impressed with the overall layout of Tailwind and how much has changed and how much has improved. And you can also schedule Instagram posts, which was a thing back when I was using it, but you can also do Facebook now as well. So it is a multi use scheduler, but on the homepage, you get a personalized marketing plan that gives you ideas of what you can share daily, which was new for me. So it almost gives you like a content calendar to personalize your marketing plan so that you can figure out what is it that I need to be sharing today. If you don't have any ideas, you can use that marketing plan to figure it out. And there's a lot of new stuff on Tailwind that I had no idea about. And the good news is, like I said, it is a Pinterest approved scheduler. So Pinterest recognizes them as an approved partner for Pinterest to schedule your pins for. And after looking through everything for this video, I'm honestly considering getting Tailwind again and testing it out for myself to see if it is truly useful to grow a Pinterest account. Because for a while there, I was using Tailwind and then strategies changed. So I stopped using Tailwind and I'm considering purchasing it again to see, is this really a good thing that people could be using? Because there is a lot of useful tools there. But the one downside to Tailwind is you pretty much have to pay for it if you want any real use out of it. On the free plan, you can get 20 pins a month so that you can test it out. But I personally pin it twice a day, which is 14 pins a week. So you get basically one week out of the month that you can use it. And I don't think that's enough to really get the full use out of Tailwind to see if it's actually a good thing to be using. But on the other hand, you are paying for convenience. Tailwind's gonna save you a lot of time. There is a lot of optimization that I right now pretty much just guess at. Like for example, the best times to pin. There is no way on Pinterest itself to see when are the best times for me to pin for my audience. I just guess. I do morning, afternoon, and night and kind of hope that my audience is on at that time. Now, pinning at the specific perfect right time doesn't necessarily matter, but I wouldn't need to guess if I had Tailwind because they do a smart schedule that tells you when you should be pinning and when to optimize best for your audience. So you wouldn't even need to guess and you could be pinning at the right time for your audience. So if you don't have a lot of time to dedicate to Pinterest, then maybe Tailwind is going to be a good option for you because I know that you can do board lists as well. So if you want to repin your Pinterest pins to multiple boards, you can do that. Now, because of the man manual pinning strategy that I use, I do not repin and repins don't matter as much as they used to anymore. You really only should pin up to the recommended amount is pin up to the most 10 relevant boards or maybe five or 10. I'm pretty sure it's 10, which I still think is a lot. So I would are willing to do repin to five if you repin at all. Right now for my manual pinning strategy, which we'll go over today, I don't repin at all because it would take way too much time. But if you wanted to use Tailwind, it wouldn't hurt to repin your pins to multiple boards. And you can set up a board list where you can just click on your board list and it'll repin to whatever boards you set in that list. So I'm genuinely considering trying out Tailwind again so that I can give you guys an even better picture of, is this good for people who don't have time to manual pin? Because normally I recommend manual pinning but I don't really have a lot of time to manual pin anymore because I'm working with seven client accounts right now. So my account kind of gets pushed to the wayside. So Tailwind might even be a good option for me, but let's talk about manual pinning next, which is a strategy that I have been using for years now. 
ever since I stopped using Tailwind. Now this method is free, but it takes time. And this is the strategy that I talk about in my Pinterest course, Pinterest Simplicity, which if you're interested in checking out, highly recommend it. I go very in depth in this strategy and everything that I know about Pinterest. I've been using Pinterest since 2019 and I have been a Pinterest manager since 2020. I'm currently working with seven client accounts and I've worked with countless accounts over the past four years. So I took everything that I knew about Pinterest from myself and my different client accounts and put it into an easy to follow Pinterest course because Unfortunately, I only have so much time to do Pinterest accounts in a month and manage so many. So I wanted to make my Pinterest strategy available to as many people as possible and package it all into a nice and simple, easy to follow Pinterest course. So if you're interested in Pinterest simplicity, check it out down below. But I will be going over the basics of what I do here. But of course, it's going to be way more in depth in the course because there's a lot of nuance to Pinterest. Now, right now, this is a strategy that I'm using for all seven of my clients, including my own account. And I wanna show you some of the results that we've been getting so that you can see how this strategy is really working. And in the last 60 days, here's how my Pinterest account has done. I've gotten 564,000 impressions and over a thousand outbound clicks to my blog. Now, like I said, I don't use mine as much, so these stats definitely could be better, but I can also show you some of my client accounts, which I have been actively pinning on. The first one I am managing here is getting 2 million impressions over the last 60 days and 11,000 link clicks. And this is the power of Pinterest, depending on the niche that you are in and how much you are pinning. 2 million impressions. What would it mean for you and your business to be seen by 2 million people or to get 11,000 link clicks to your blog. And then the by far most impressive Pinterest account that I am running right now is getting 27 million impressions over the last 60 days and 100 thousand link clicks. So if you are not using Pinterest, you definitely need to be because this account is getting 27 million impressions and 100,000 link clicks. And this is by far the craziest number that I have ever seen. Now I'm not going to take you through every single account because there are seven of them and that'll take a while, but this is going to give you a good idea of the best accounts that I have and like some of the best case scenario results that you are going to get. So if you are not using Pinterest, you definitely need to be. And this is with, of course, my manual pinning strategy, but here's the basics. First, you got to figure out how much do you want to be pinning? Everyone's going to be different depending on the time that you have throughout the week. But for myself, and my account, account specifically, I will pin two times a week because that's literally all that I have time for. And I will take one day out of the week to get all the work done for my specific account. Now I recommend that you do two to five pins a day. And this is what I offer to my clients. By far my most popular package that gets requested is my platinum pinning package, which is five pins a day. Five pins a day and two pins a day are the most popular ones. So that's what's most common but you can do whatever works best for you. It doesn't really matter. And I take a few hours on Saturday and a few hours on Sunday to get all of the work done. However, of course, I do have eight accounts to work on. So if you're only working on your own account, you can do it in a lot less time. But once you figure out how many pins a week you are gonna be doing, you can figure out how many links and how many designs you wanna use for the week. So for two pins a day, I will choose six links and create four different designs for that one week. And then the next week I will switch out different links and create different designs so that I'm constantly rotating what links that I'm doing and making sure that there's always fresh content, fresh pins, fresh designs going out on my account. And it's always a good idea to be constantly putting out new content on your blog every week or wherever it is that you are putting out content because Pinterest really likes fresh links. I try to put out one new video and one new blog post link. So two out of my six links are new links every single a week and then the other four are just old blog posts that have done well before or something I haven't pinned in a while. They're just old content that I've put out on, on the platform before. Now creating pins is pretty simple. I use Canva to do all of mine and I will either create my own templates or I will take ones from Canva that have been designed and then I will make sure to update them and make them my own. When you are creating pins, make sure that you are not using text that is super hard to read because Pinterest can actually read what is on your Pinterest pin both the words that you are using on your Pinterest pin and the photo that you are using, it can detect the image and see what is actually in the image. But the text, if you are using really pretty cursive scrawling type text, Pinterest might not be able to read it as easy and neither will your audience because there's a lot of pins that they're going to be scrolling through on the platform. So you want your pins to not only stand out, but be easy to read because if it's hard to read, they're just going to keep scrolling because they're not going to waste the time to try to read your pin because there's a lot of content that they could be getting to. So you want to make sure the text is big and easy to read, bold, stands out, along with having a nice photo that is relevant to your Pinterest topic. Because as I said, Pinterest can detect the subject of your Pinterest pin. So if you are posting about gardening, you want to make sure that you have a relevant picture of gardening 
in the background so that this kind of just gives Pinterest a little bit more context about what your pin is because it needs context to put it in the right places so that it's shown to the right people, put in the right search terms, different things like that. It needs to be categorized correctly. And if you have a gardening pin, but a airplane in the background, Pinterest is gonna be a little bit confused. And I recommend checking out something like a stock photo subscription site as well, because due to the fact that Pinterest can understand what your photo is, if they continually see that photo being used on like the freely available photos on Canva, along with everyone else using that exact same photo, Pinterest can actually get confused and start associating the specific photo with other people. So for example, if you take a free photo off of Canva or even just a paid photo off of Canva and you use that for your Pinterest pin, but 12 other people have used it as well, Pinterest will associate all of those pins together. And they might get a little bit confused about what the heck your Pinterest pin is actually about. Now this is a little bit hard to explain without like physically showing you. So in my course, I do talk a lot about this and actually give examples and like show exactly what I'm talking about because it does get a little bit difficult to explain, but that's kind of like the basics of it. One of the requirements for a fresh pin, which is something Pinterest is pushing a lot lately, is a brand new photo. And unless you're taking your own photos, which I don't know about you, but I don't have time for, and I'm also not that great of a photographer, I use stock photo sites because the one that I'm using right now, Pixie Stock, will put out new photos every single month. And that way you're pretty much one of the only people that are going to be using that Pinterest pin photo and it'll make your pins do better. I noticed when I switched to a stock photo subscription site that my pins were doing better because the images in the background were fresh. Nobody was using them or at least very, very, very few people were using them. So if you wanna check out Pixie Stock, I'll leave it down below. But other than that, in terms of creating a good Pinterest pin, you also wanna make sure you have a click worthy title that people are going to want to click on and go through and read your post. But that is pretty much the basics of having a click worthy, good Pinterest pin and like pin design. Once you've got your pins created, now we can focus on the keywords and the Pinterest pin descriptions. Now there's a lot of work that goes into having a good Pinterest profile and making it SEO ready and you need to make sure that you are using the right keywords for your audience to see what they are searching up so that you know how to write out a proper pin description to get put where you need to get put. Now I keep track of all my keywords, my descriptions, my board list, links, and all of that and a keyword tracker, which I show you how to use and I give out for free in the Pinterest Simplicity course. It's honestly a lifesaver when pinning because it saves so much time to have everything in one specific place organized. It makes it so much easier to pin. It saves a lot of time, but I'm going to create every single week I did a new description and target a few keywords each time to hopefully rank and search and get found that way. So I will take my six links and I will create a new pin description targeting certain keywords one week. And then the next week I will switch out and target slightly different keywords. And then over time, try to just hit as many keywords as I possibly can with different descriptions to try and rank for as many key terms as possible and ranking different Pinterest pins. Ranking in search is the best way to get found because it is organic traffic. Someone searches something up on Pinterest. And if you are ranking, you can get found way easier. This also helps you show up on people's home pages as well. So if someone's searching up something related to gardening, you might not be ranking, but if you have gardening pins, Pinterest will show people who look up gardening stuff, relevant gardening pins on their home pages, and you might get showed up in the feed there as well. So SEO and keywords is really important on Pinterest if you want to get noticed. Now this really just barely scratches the surface of what I do each and every week to make sure that my clients get the results that they do and they are growing. So if you wanted to learn more, make sure to check out Pinterest Simplicity down below in the description or check out this video for Pinterest help. Make sure to like if you like and subscribe to my channel down below for more videos just like this and I'll see you next week. Bye.